34 Bimid Bar Section 1 The Counting and the Reckoning Rabbi Abba speaks about the creation of man saying that God made him in the image of the higher and the lower ones as the combination of them all man was composed of both male and female and the female side was composed of both cheese and judgment after they sinned they became concerned with only worldly matters and they no longer knew wisdom neither of Adam's table from the upper aspects nor came from the lower aspects. Inherited the earth because neither of them left any offspring the world was founded from Seth but it was not complete until Abraham came once Isaac and Jacob came everything was included in the central column and the world stood firm even with this it still required the twelve tribes and seventy persons that came from Jacob and it required Israel to receive the Torah and erect the tabernacle and God wished to count all his legions of people the children of Israel in order to link them to their roots above after Israel left the land of Egypt they achieved both the Torah and the tabernacle and then they were perfectly complete Rabbi Yitzhak says that when one speaks of his own blessings he must also bless God and acknowledge those blessings he says that blessings from above do not rest on anything that has been counted but the counting of the children of Israel was an exception we hear that God will bless the women who were not counted among the census the priests and it. Lovitz and the children under the age of 20 Rabbi Shimon explains to Rabbi Yehuda what the source of the blessings is and says that when God's illumination is awakened everything is in love and perfection and in peace one and Hashem spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting Bimid Bar 11 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with so Elohim created man in his own image Beersheet 127 we have learned this verse come and behold at the time the Holy One blessed be he created. The man he made him in the image of the upper beings and lower beings and he was a combination of all his light illuminated from one end of the world to the other end of the world and everyone feared him too and though it was settled we must look into this verse so Elohim created man in his own image in the image of Elohim he created him since it already said his image why repeat again in the image of Elohim he created him he answers there were two levels in the man since he was Composed of male and female therefore there is one for the male that is so Elohim created and one for the female that is in the image 3 and as a result of this there were assuredly two faces male and female and the end of the verse proves it since it is written male and female he created them and he was composed of both aspects although the female was attached to his side she on her own was also composed of two sides which are she said in judgment to be complete in all four and he used to observe with wisdom up and down because he sent these faces diminished the wisdom disappeared from him and he was only concerned with his own bodily matters and afterwards he begot sons from above and below that is Abel was from the upper aspects and came from the lower and neither of them inhabited the earth since none of them left any descendants in the world and he fathered a son namely Seth and from him the world was planted this has been explained five in spite of all. This the world below was not finished and complete and was not sustained on its own until Abraham came along the world was sustained but not completed until Abraham was present in the world and held onto the world with his right hand that is Jesus as one who holds and assists the right hand of someone who fell Isaac came along and held the world's hand with the left hand that is pure and the world was sustained even more when Jacob came along he held onto the center with the body that is the central column and became included in both sides the right and the left and the world stood firm and did not collapse six and with all this the world was not properly planted with its roots until Jacob begot twelve tribes and seventy persons and the world was planted even so it was not completed until the time Israel received the Torah and the tabernacle was erected at that time the worlds could exist and were completed and the higher and lower beings were sent at seven since the Torah and the tabernacle were erected namely Zeir and Ben and Malchut the Holy One blessed be he wanted to count the troops of the Torah how many legions are there in the Torah and Zeir and Ben how many hosts are in the tabernacle which is Malchut this means that he wanted to count Israel who are the legions of Zeir and Ben and Malchut come and behold every item that needs to be settled in its place that is to link properly the branch below to its root on top does not settle until it is uttered by mouth and is counted here also the Holy One blessed be he wanted to count the soldiers of the Torah and the soldiers of the tabernacle in order to tie Israel to their roots above which are Zeir and Ben and Malchut called Torah and tabernacle and they are all united and are inseparable from each other everything is in a likeness of above since their roots the Torah and tabernacle are joined and inseparable from each other and are in unison eight therefore Israel who are the legions of Zeir and Ben and Malchut are counted so that they are known in addition to the others who have no number namely the women and those younger than twenty years therefore it is written and Hashem spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting if it is in the tent of meeting why is it required to mention that it was in the wilderness of Sinai since it is known that the tent of meeting was in no other place except in the wilderness of Sinai he replies once is for the Torah namely Zeir and Ben and once is for the tabernacle that is Malchut 9 and both Torah and tabernacle were on the first day of the second month in the second year of it that is the secret of Bura and the illumination of Shachma of the left since the month of Nisan is the right column and Shizit and Iyar is the left column and Bura and all is one that is the right and the left were joined in harmony as one this month is also called the month of lip brightness I Malachim 61 alluding to the month end Year that is luminous to the moon that is Malchut since the main perfection of Malchut is from the left column, the secret of the second month and second year at that time all the worlds are whole like Malchut that is their root after they were come out of the land of Egypt but the scripture informs us here that when Israel left Egypt it was the first month that is to say they went out from the aspect of the first month which is Jesus and the right column and then they were perfected also. From the aspect of the second month which is Bure and the left column 10 Rabbi Yitzhak began the discussion with Hashem has been mindful of us he will bless us he will bless the house Tehillim 11,512 Hashem has been mindful of us he will bless us refers to the men who were included in the count of the desert whom the Holy One blessed be he blesses and to whom he adds more each time 11 come and behold he who speaks in praise of his friend of his children or of his money or wealth must also bless him and acknowledge those blessings from where do we learn this from Moses since it is written behold you are this day like the stars of heaven for multitude and afterwards what does he say Hashem the Elohim of your fathers makes you a thousand times many more than you are Devarim 110 to 11 there are two blessings here one is the Hashem the Elohim of your fathers that is one and the one following that is and bless you as he has promised you but he promised to acknowledge them and add blessings benedictions upon those benedictions 12 and if he counts the praises of his friend but does not acknowledge these benedictions he will be punished because of this first from above that is he will be harmed because of it and if he blesses him he will be blessed himself from above and he should bless him with a good eye and not with an evil eye and in all things the holy one blessed be he wishes to have the blessings given with a good heart when he blesses and sins when one blesses his friend the Holy One blessed be he wishes one to bless with a good eye and a good heart when one gives grace to the Holy One blessed be he most certainly it must be in good eye and with a good and loving heart therefore it is written and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart Devarim 65 13 come and behold it has been established that the blessing of above does not rest on something that has been counted you may question how could they have counted Israel it is because they took ransom from them and it was settled and the count did not take place until all the ransom was gathered and counted at first they would bless Israel and then they would count the ransom and they would repeat and bless Israel again so the result is that we find that Israel were blessed in the beginning and at the end and there was no death amongst them 14 he asks why does death result from counting and he answers it is because the blessing does not dwell when you count and when the blessing departs the other side rests upon it and one could be damaged therefore they used to substitute a monetary ransom for the count and thereby remove the threat of death 15 he will bless the house of Israel Tehillim 11,512 these are the women who are called house which were not included in the count because women were not counted in the desert he will bless the house of Aaron because they are the priests and they bless the people with a benevolent eye a good heart and heartfelt love the house of Aaron why does it mention the house it alludes also to the women who are blessed by the blessing of Aaron 16 he will bless those who fear Hashem 13 these are the Levites all of whom are blessed because they fear Hashem it is written both small and great of it because although the young were not included in the count since they were counting the population only from 20 years and older still they should be
Evermore Tehillim 1333 Rabbi Yehuda was present before Rabbi Shimon he said to him from where do Yisrael draw their blessings he answered him woe to the world that does not pay attention and to men who do not observe the glory of the Most High King come and behold at a time when Yisrael are worthy before the Holy One blessed be he the worlds were in one uppermost and holy tree that is Zeirn where all the sustenance is and it received blessings from the place where all the blessings were gathered that is Bina where it was planted and rooted since Mokin of Zeirn were planted in Bina in the secret of the three that emanate from one one exists in three nineteen and Yisrael below were blessed from the place out of which all blessings emanate and are not prevented from leaving that is Malchut as is written may Hashem bless you out of Zion and like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion Tehillim 1333 that is Malchut and it is further written because it is there that Hashem commanded the blessing life forever Ibit and that is the light of the universe it is written out of Zion the perfection of beauty Elohim has shown forth Ibit 502 has shown forth means illuminates as in he shown forth from Mount Perrin to 332 and when he lights up he illuminates all the world's twenty and when this light meaning the blessing and life mentioned above awakens all is joined that is in the secret of union everything is with love all is with perfection and then it is all peaceful peace above and peace below that is the meaning of peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces Tehillim 1227 section to rejoice with Jerusalem Rabbi Lazar begins by saying that God and all his hosts pay attention to whoever speaks the words of the Torah because the Torah is so loved by him whoever performs one precept of the Torah causes it to awaken above this makes peace above and below Rabbi Lazar says that people are to rejoice only when they are in the Holy Land but not when they do not live there. Rabbi Abba adds that one may rejoice only when Jerusalem is in a state of happiness but never when Yisrael is in exile we learn of why Hashem should be served with gladness and yet also with fear and trembling. 21 Every man of the children of Yisrael shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Bimidbar 22 Rabbi Lazar began the discussion with rejoice with Jerusalem. And be glad with her all you that love her. Yeshayah 6610 How beloved the Torah is before the Holy One blessed be he for wherever the words of the Torah are heard the Holy One blessed be he and all his hosts pay attention to his words and the Holy One blessed be he comes to live with him that is the meaning of in all places where I cause my name to be pronounced Shema 2021 20, and in addition to this his enemies fall before him this has already been explained 22 come and behold it. Commandments of the Torah are supernal above a man comes and performs one precept that precept stands up before the Holy One blessed be he and decorates itself and says this person has made me and I am from him for he awakens it above as he arouses it below it awakens above and makes peace above and below that is he brings about a bond between Zeir and Ben and Malchud which are referred to as above and below as it was said or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with me Yeshayah 275 that he may make peace with me that is above in Zeir and Ben and he shall make peace with me that is below in Malchud happy is a lot of that man who performs the precepts of the Torah 23 rejoice with Jerusalem that is because festivity is prevalent only when Israel reside in the Holy Land it is there that the woman conjugates with her husband that is Zeir and Ben and Malchud then it is time for everyone to rejoice above and below during. The time when Yisrael are not living in the Holy Land, a man is not permitted to rejoice and show joy as is written, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her. This is meant precisely that is when Yisrael are in IT24. Rabbi Abba observed one man who was rejoicing in the house of a tyrant in Babylon. He kicked and scolded him and said, It is written, rejoice with Jerusalem during a time when Jerusalem is in happiness. A person is required to rejoice and not during the time of the exile. Rabbi Elazer follows this reasoning in saying, Rejoice with Jerusalem, namely as is written, Serve Hashem with gladness. Tehillim 1002, which means that Jerusalem is the Sheshana and it is obligatory to serve her and make her happy. 25. One verse says, Serve Hashem with gladness. Tehillim 1002 and one says, Serve Hashem with fear and rejoice with trembling. Tehillim 211. What is the difference between them? He answers, One speaks of the time when Yisrael live in the Holy Land, that is when they serve. Hashem happily and one speaks of a time when Yisrael live in other lands, then it is necessary to serve Hashem in fear and rejoice while trembling. Serve Hashem with fear. This refers to the congregation of Yisrael namely Malchut at a time when she is in exile among the nations. 26 Rabbi Yehuda said the scripture says for you shall go out with joy. Yeshayah 5512 referring to the congregation of Yisrael and since it says you shall go out it means from exile and it is called the rejoicing. Thus even while still residing in the exile we call it a rejoicing. He replied to him certainly that is the way it is during all the time she is in exile and lies in the dust. You cannot call it happiness until the Holy One blessed be he comes and raises her from the dust and says to her shake yourself from the dust. Yeshayah 522 arise shine Yeshayah 601 and then they will join together at that point it is called rejoicing that will be happiness for everyone and then certainly you shall go out with joy and many legions will go out to greet and receive the matron to the joyous festivity of the king as it is written the mountains and the hills shall break forth Yeshayah 5512 and further for Hashem will go before you and the Elohim of Israel will be your rear guard Yeshayah 5212 section 3 the standards Rabbi Yehuda talks about the four camps of Israel and the twelve tribes and twelve boundaries he brings into his discussion the four faces in the four corners of the universe all of which are integrated in man he tells of the movement of the two standards of Judah and Reuben that traveled with the tent of meeting and the two standards of Ephraim and Dan that followed Rabbi Yehuda correlates the various Firat and the four archangels and the letters in the holy name with these standards and events he talks about the direction of circling the altar the direction of sunrise and the importance of the direction of the bed for creating a male child 27 every man's hall pitch by his own standard with the ensigns Bimid bar 22 these are the four camps of the congregation of Israel that is the secret of Chesed Burit Tiferet and Malchut and they are Michael Gabriel Uriel Raphael who represent the 12 tribes and 12 boundaries all encircled around her because Chesed Burit Tiferet and Malchut each have three columns for a total of 12 everything reflects the above the 12 boundaries of Zeir and in the scripture says there the tribes used to go up the tribes of Yah Tehillim 1224 the words there the tribes used to go up refer to the 12 tribes which are the 12 boundaries below of Malchut who went up to the 12 boundaries of Zeir and in 28 the tribes of Yah it has been explained that this is because Yah the secret of Chakma and Bina is assuredly an appointed practice also a testimony for Israel and therefore it is written the Rabbanite with Hay as prefix and Yah as suffix. The Midbar 267 the Shimonite Ibid 14 this is because each individual contains Yah in the beginning and Yud at the end but assuredly it is so because the uppermost holy tree that is the name of Yud Hay has stamped them with its seal and this has been explained according to the scripture as for the likeness of their faces the forehead the face of a man the face of a lion on the right Yah 110 in which the image of a man which is Malchut is included in all and there were four faces to the four directions of the world they are distinguished in their appearances namely a lion and ox and an eagle and all are integrated in man the secret of Malchut the lion ox and eagle are Shesed Bura and Tiferet and the face of man is Malchut which draws from all and all are included in IT 29 Michael is to the right which is South Gabriel is to the left which is to the north Uriel is to the front which is East Raphael is to the back which is west and the Sheshanat is on top. Of them two are on this side from south and north and two are on that side from east and west and she Malchut is in the center likewise it is on the earth below at the standards two are on this side the standard of Judah's camp and the standard of Reuben's camp and two are on that side which includes the standard of Ephraim's camp and the standard of Dan's camp and Yahweh is in the center which is the secret of the two tablets of testimonial in the ark that traveled in their midst and it. Change of order that we find here at the standards is that east moves first, namely Tiferet will be explained further. Thirty, since the two standards traveled that of Judah and Reuben, what does the scripture say? Then the tent of meeting shall set forward with the camp
First Hey Bada overall holiness is Bob Typhoret everything is comprised in it the last Hey which is Malchut 32 the Yud of Yud Hey Bob Hey of Zeir and Ben is East and that is the beginning of light it travels and wanders and produces the South that is Jesus and the South goes out suspended from beginning of the East that is the Yud of Yud Hey Bob Hey Shachma Hey of Yud Hey Bob Hey of Zeir and Ben is South meaning that from it the South goes forth to the world since Hey is Bada and from Bada. The Chisid is drawn that is south, but the Yud representing Chakma enters at the beginning of the east and takes out Chisid, which evolves from Bana to Zeir and Pen 33 from Hay comes south and north, and that which is in between, which is the central column that unites them from Yud east and from Yud Hay south and north depend on them, south from Yud and north from Hay Bob in the center, which unites them, and that is a male child, namely Typhoret, that is a son of Yud Hay, and for this reason it is between north and south. Therefore, we are taught that whoever places his bed between the north and the south shall have male children, because this male child who is Typhoret is situated between north and south, for from the Supreme Hay Bada came out north and south, which are the two columns in IT. The male child, namely Typhoret, is between them, uniting them in the mystery of Yud Bob Hay Yud is the right column on the south, Bob is the central column on whose right is south, and on whose left is. North Hay is the left column on the north, the last Hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay is west, namely Malchut 34. Consequently, the south holds to the east where the sun rises and depends on it. Therefore, we are taught that the aspect of Abba that is the Yud bonds and depends on the supreme Chisit and on the side of Ima that is the Hay Bureau depends. Likewise, everything holds to each other. 35. The corners of the altar were also circled in that manner. It comes to the southeast corner because the south is strengthened in the east. The central column, which is the sunrise and the strength of the sun, only stays at the start. It then approaches the northeast corner since after the south, namely Chisit, received the strength of the east. That is after the central column united south and north. The east illuminated to the north and the north was included in the south because the left is combined in the right through the central column. 36. It then comes to the northwest corner since the west. That is in the last hay, namely Malchut receives from the north, and therefore the north moves west since Malchut is built from the left column. It then follows to the southwest corner because Malchut moves to join in the south, namely to dress up Chakma, which has him since the south is dependent on the east, the central column, and therefore its strengthening, which is the east moves first, the west moves to grasp the south, and the south, which is its strengthening, moves first. That is the meaning of the words, and his right hand embraces me. Sure, Hashirim 26, right meaning south, therefore it nourishes from two sides, from the north and south, from left and right. That is the meaning of his left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. Left is north and right is south. 37, and this mystery I learned that the Holy One blessed be he places his bed from north and south, since his bed is the mystery of Malchut, and it is certainly attached to the sun that is Zeir and who is. There from south and north and therefore people should place their bed between north and south the right of the bed should be to the south and the left of the bed to the north just as Zeir and stands between south and north and so my father taught me that one is given male children because he concentrated on the complete whole supernal faith namely the Holy One blessed be he who is situated between north and south and the congregation of Israel namely Malchut also called bed situated between north and south most certainly he shall have male children 38 and in all things we must show a deed which should be in the likeness of the higher as one manifested deed below likewise it awakens on him above this has been explained Rabbi Pinchas heard this explanation and kissed Rabbi Lazar and cried and smiled he said blessed is my lot in this world and the world to come section 4 Hashem is my light and my salvation Rabbi Pinchas tells us that as Soon as God has shown on a person and as soon as the person has gazed on the supreme light he no longer has fear of anyone above or below we hear an explanation of the scripture that says let your father and your mother be glad and let her who bore you rejoice 39 Rabbi Pinches opened the discussion and said Hashem is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear Tehillim 271 Hashem is my light and my salvation meaning as soon as a man has gazed on the supreme light and the holy one Blessed be he has shown on him he no longer has fear from anyone above or below as it says but Hashem shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you Yeshua 602 Hashem is the stronghold of my life Tehillim 271 that I as once the holy one blessed be he gives support to man he has no fear in that world from any prosecutor and so am I as soon as I cling to your father and you I have no fear in this world or the other world 40 of you it is written let your father and your mother be glad Mishlei 2325 he asks since it is written let your father and your mother be glad what is the meaning of and let her who bore you rejoice of it it would seem sufficient with the mention of the mother and he answers only your father means the holy one blessed be he and your mother is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut the words and let her who bore you rejoice means she who bore you below that is your mother in this world and if so Rabbi Shimon your father where is his joy since he is not even alluded to in this and he replies it is because he has a verse of his own as it is written the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice of it 24 which refers to the holy one blessed be he and he who begets a wise child shall have joy of him of it is your father below namely Rabbi Shimon an alternate explanation the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice is the father below and have he who begets a wise child shall have joy of him is written with an extra Bob since it would have sufficed to write he who begets it refers to the Holy One blessed be he above who is called Bob section 5 into your hand I commit my spirit Rabbi Lazar explains that at night the tree of death rules in the world and therefore one must deposit his soul with God to keep it safe during sleep everyone gets a taste of death until morning comes and the tree of life awakens again Rabbi Yehuda wonders why even Gentiles can rise in the middle of the night even though the tree of death still reigns Rabbi Lazar explains that even the idolatrous nations are joined to their aspect of the defiled spirit of the left as everything that is above is likewise down below he talks about the time when Bilam could not curse Israel because there was no judgment hanging over them Rabbi Lazar uses the analogy of a snake with the movements of its head and its tail to explain what is driving and controlling events below and above the section closes with an explanation of peculiar possession which is deemed to be God's possession of the three patriarchs and the priests Levites and Yisrael 41 Rabbi Lazar said it is written into your hand I commit my spirit you have redeemed me Hashem of truth Tehillim 315 this verse must be examined have you ever seen someone who would deposit something in the hands of the king who is the holy one blessed be he and he replies therefore most certainly happy is a man that follows the ways of the holy king and does not sin before him come and behold as soon as night falls the tree of death rules in the world and the tree of life disappears high above and the tree of death is the sole ruler in the universe and all inhabitants of the world taste of death since sleep is a 160th portion of death what is the reason because this tree causes this malchute that reigns alone without zeir and gives rise to this since malchute is called night 42 and a Person should take precautions and entrust his soul in his hand for deposit. This is as a man provides another man with a deposit that is a pledge. Even if he owes more than the value of a security, it is not worthy for him to be involved in a conflict with him since he gave a deposit. However, if he refuses to give him a deposit, we should certainly examine him because he is not from the holy seat or from the faithful. 43 Likewise is this tree which is Malchut to which people give their soul. As a deposit, it receives all the souls of the inhabitants of the world and everyone taste of death because this is the tree of death during the time that Malchut is separated from Zeir and which is the tree of life. It is a tree of death in spite of the fact that these souls are all guilty before it and it is not appropriate to return the deposit to men nonetheless since they were presented to it as a pledge deposit. It returns all these deposits to their owners. 44 Come and behold this. Tree of death is not obligated to return the man the deposit in the morning only when the tree of life awakens in the world and when does the tree of life awaken when the morning comes then since this tree of life awakens in the universe and all people come out alive that tree of death leaves and returns all the deposits provided to it and goes away what is the reason that they live it is because of that tree of life that is Zeir and that reigns during the day 45 and you may ask why if this is so we see many people getting up at night from their sleep and their life is returned to them while the tree of death
Since they are interlinked from below upwards like a chain, the idolatrous nations are guided after the manner which is their aspect of the defiled spirit. 47 Bilam employed all the lowest levels that descend from the left aspect of Malchut. He used to gaze at the lowest level detail and he figured out what was above since the lowest is controlled solely by the head. He therefore declared, How shall I curse whom El has not cursed since he could see the lore and knew that the supreme head, which is the left of Malchut, is not in a state of judgment during that period. 48 And even though we explain the name El to be supernal, Chesit, holy Malchut receives this name in the likeness of above and becomes goodness and Chesit in this world, therefore it is called by the name El. However, it displays anger every day according to the meaning of El who has indignation every day. Talim 711 Because there is judgment in it, but in that period there was no judgment in it, therefore Bilam. Said, How shall I curse whom El has not cursed? 49 Come and behold, we explained about El Shaytay that sathiates the world and said to the world, Enough had died, that he is it provides enough bounty to Malchut that is called world. This El who is Malchut conjugates with him, and therefore it is called El Shaytay, since El which is Malchut unites with Shaytay which is Yizit, and therefore he declared, How shall I curse whom El has not cursed? Referring to Malchut which is called El Hinu. That is the head awakens which is Malchut, so the lower also awakens which is the tail, namely the spirit of defilement, and Bilam observed the tail and knew what was in the head. 50 Rabbi Lazar what he opened the discussion and said, Her sound is like that of a snake on the move. Your Mayah 4622 Now that Israel are in exile, most certainly Malchut goes on like a snake, because the way of a snake is that when it bows its head to the dust, it raises its tail, the tail controls and hits those. Who are in its way, and now it is also that way when Yisrael are in exile, Malchut behaves likewise in the same manner as of the snake. The head is in the ground, and the tail, namely the lowest level mentioned above, rules who cause the tail to rise above to guide and hit. That is the head which is bowed downwards, who drives the tail, and who propels the tail on its journeys. It is the same head, although it is lowered to the dust, it still leads the movements of the tail. Therefore, says the scripture, her sound is like that of a snake on the move. Fifty-one, and now the other nations that hold to the tail of Malchut rise above and dictate and harm, and the head is bowed to the dust, as it was said, is fallen. She shall no more rise. Amos fifty-two. Still, the head guides the tail and preserves it, as it says, they made me the keeper of the vineyard. Sure, Hasherim sixteen, which refers to the idolatrous nations who are in the tail. Rabbi Yehuda then came close and kissed his hands and said, if I had not asked. Anything in this world except this question and again this answer it would have been sufficient for now I understand the aspect of the idolatrous nations and how their dictatorship is led praiseworthy is a lot of Israel for about them it is written for Hashem has chosen Jacob to himself Israel for his peculiar possession Tehillim 1354 52 Rabbi Lazar asked him what is the definition of peculiar possession when the scripture says Israel for his peculiar possession he said to him the three patriarchs are alluded to and they are called possession both above where they are referred to as Chesed, Bura and Tiferet and below namely Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and likewise are the priests Levites and Israel that also correspond to Chesed, Bura and Tiferet and everything is the same and they are the possession of the Holy One blessed be he above and the possession of the Holy One blessed be he below and that is what is written and you shall be my own treasure also. Possession from among all people Shemot 195 that is because they have priestly Levites and Israel who are called possession section 6 is literally that of Solomon between north and south the rabbis return to their discussion of the standards of the tribes that traveled with the tent of meeting we hear that holy Israel will not bless the universe except through the Sheshanah the question arises how Israel could have seen the Sheshanah when his eyes were dim with age and the answer is that he perceived her fragrance we learn that the Sheshanah is in the west and are told of the importance of direction in the union of the Sheshanah with the body we read of the ten hallelujahs in the five psalms and how a person accepts the yoke of the heavenly kingdom in the morning when he recites praises to God the summary of the section is that if one wishes to create a unification to put the lights in order one must take upon himself the yoke of the holy kingdom in in order to elevate himself through the hallowed connection of the south, Chesed, one must encircle the four corners of the universe, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, and Malchut, until he joins them together into one knot, and in the south he should arrange a place and dwell there. 53 Then the tent of meeting shall set forward with the camp of the Levites, Bimid, Bar 217. After this, it is written on the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim by their host, Sibid 18, that refers to the Sheshanah. That rests on the west, as it was explained that Ephraim traveled on the west, the secret of Malchut, and therefore he traveled after the standard of Reuben, who is on the south, which is Chesed, and so on. It is written, and he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless, saying, and he said, Ephraim, Bershi 4820, he asks, By you shall Israel bless, referring to Israel, Sabah, he questions, What does this teach us? 54 And he replies, By you shall Israel be blessed, is not what is. Actually written nor is by you will Israel be blessed what then is the meaning of by you shall Israel bless which refers to others getting blessed the explanation is that holy Israel meaning Zeir and will not bless the world except through you Ephraim who resides in the west meaning the Sheshanah and it is written I am El Shaddai be fruitful and multiply Bereshi 3511 we therefore see that the blessing rests with the Sheshanah that is called El Shaddai we learned that he saw the Sheshanah with him and then he declared by you shall Israel bless saying meaning by the Sheshanah shall he bless the world 55 he questions how could he see the Sheshanah since it is also written now the eyes of Israel were dim from old age Bereshi 4810 which also alludes to the spiritual eyes and he replies however it is written changing his hands Zibit 14 why the crossing and he answers the right hand was raised corresponding to Ephraim and the Sheshanah turned in the direction of Ephraim and Israel had smelled the fragrance of the Sheshanah over his head. He then said, By you shall Israel bless and saw her in the west, meaning that he did not see with his eyes but perceived it by the sense of smell, which means from below upward 56. Certainly the Sheshanah is in the west, and we explained that this is in order that she should be between the north and south, because the west is situated between north and south, and so she will unite with the body, the secret of Zeir. And been called body, which means the seven lords Firat, and be with IT in one union, and the north, which is the left column of Zeir, and receives her under its head, and the south, which is the right of Zeir, and embraces her. That is what is written, his left hand is under my head. Sure, Hasherim 26 since from the left, the secret of the illumination of Chakmish, she receives the first three Firat, also called head, and his right hand embraces me, and from the right, the secret of Shasadim she receives the illumination of the seven lords Firat that are referred to as body and we explain certainly Solomon's bed which is the mystical reference to Malchut called bed is situated between north and south that are Chesed and Bura in order that it should adhere to the body that is Tiferet and they are one wholeness by which the universe is blessed we learn that whoever recites a praise of David Tehillim 145 three times daily is assured to be worthy of the world to come and we concluded that it's meaning is that he unites this praise which refers to Malchut to be with Zeir and every day between the north and south 57 a person comes in the morning and accepts upon himself the yoke of the heavenly kingdom with these praises that he recites referring to a praise of David and the rest of the Halleluyahs which are the order of the ten praises of the ten holy Firat of the holy name therefore there are ten Halleluyahs concluding with ten praises that our Halleluiah praise El in his sanctuary praise him Tehillim 1501 he queries where do we find ten Halleluiahs there are only five since there are only five psalms that begin with Halleluiah and he responds it is because each psalm begins with Halleluiah and concludes with Halleluiah for a total of 1058 afterwards he established the sequence of praise of the song of the sea Shema 15 that includes everything and with this he accepts upon himself the yoke of the holy kingdom he then causes Jesus to rest it in the conclusion of the prayers which makes it hallowed since the morning prayer corresponds to Abraham who is Jesus and the right column afterwards in the afternoon prayer Bura is impending and judgment is prevalent which corresponds to Isaac who is Bura and the left column we find that this bed which refers to Malchut is placed daily between north and south between the morning prayer the secret of the south and the
Lights in order in the mystical connections meaning the unifications you who wish to create a unification in the sequence of the supreme connection firstly undertake upon yourselves daily the yoke of the holy kingdom and by doing so you will elevate yourselves with her through the hallowed connection of the south meaning she and encircle the four directions of the world she said viewer typhoret and malchute until you join them together into one knot and in the south you should arrange a place and dwell there similar to the encircling of the altar as explained before section 7 the sign of unification rabbi shimon repeats to his son the importance and the mystical meaning of the direction for encircling the altar only when this is properly done can a person create the perfect unification 61 rabbi laser asked his father rabbi shimon where do we find the sign of unification so that we do not hear he told him my son although we explained this in many Facets and these words were scattered here and there. Keep the sign in your hand. This is similar to the encircling of the altar which we have previously learned. One should approach the southeast corner, northeast, northwest, and southwest as we described before. So he asked him, It is inconceivable to do anything until a person accepts upon himself the yoke of the holy kingdom first and carries that yoke. Yet you said he should first come to the south, which is Jesus 62. He told him, I have already told you everything I said first. That one approaches the corner and you know the hidden meaning of corner. That is Malchut, which is the yoke of holy Malchut. Following that is southeast. One should connect the south Jesus to the east, which is Typhoret, the central column, because there in the east is the tree of life, which is Typhoret. This is in order to bring together the south with the east, who is Supernal Abba, meaning Chakma, also called Supernal Abba and IMA because the sun, which is. Typhoret comes from the father's side, because the root of Typhoret is in the concealed dad of Supernal Abba and Ima hence one unites from south to the east for the fortitude of the south is in the east namely in the concealed dad of Supernal Abba and Ima which is the beginning of the east and therefore it is imperative that south and east should be bound together 63 and east connects to the north which is in Ima referring to Bina also called Yisrael Saba and Tabuna from which the north is drawn forth, that is the left column since it meaning Bina completes and fills the rivers and springs of the east which is the revealed dad and Typhoret and therefore it is imperative to unite northeast meaning to connect the east with Bina however these east and north are Abba and Ima that never separate because east is dad of Supernal Abba that is the secret of Supernal Abba and Ima dad of Supernal Abba cleaves to dad of Supernal Ima and the left column that is revealed in her. That is called north as we already explained and the reason she the supernal IMA is called northern Hepsophone it is because it is the supernal hidden one Hepsophone and from her end the north emanates which is the left column this is because from Abba's end the north is hidden and concealed the judgments arise from her side although she is merciful and happy and we already explained it when she IMA emerges the north emanates from her IT is from her that the north reveals itself because he Abba was included in and connected to the south and the north is hidden in IT 64 following that he will come to the northwestern corner from Abba's side the sun emerges which is Typhoret east and from IMA side which is north the daughter emerges which is Malchut west and because of that it is northwestern from north which is IMA to west which is Malchut and that is the first corner since corner is the meaning of Malchut that one must accept upon himself first of all and now it is simply Referred to as north meaning in IMA and left column then one must connect it to the south which is Chisit and the right column where everything is connected where the body that is Zeir Anpin is situated since Zeir Anpin emanates from Abba as mentioned above he is therefore contained completely in the south like Abba and the north is concealed in him it is therefore southwestern 65 and we find this corner which alludes to Malchut three times one is that a person must first accept upon himself and the following is to connect Malchut with both arms that are south and north right and left so as to join in the body which is Typhoret the central column so that all should be united in one and that is the order of the perfect unification to unite every aspect with the appropriate bond and one must not substitute one side with another side that is not appropriate for it so as not to be punished whoever operates this unification properly as I described happy is his share in this world and the world to come since he knows how to prepare the sequence of praise for his master and the unification of his master and furthermore the holy one blessed be he takes praise in him about him the verse is written and said to me you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 section 8 the meditation of prayer Rabbi Shimon reiterates much of the information in previous sections to do with the consignment of the soul at night and the requirement to give praise to God in the morning he speaks about entering the synagogue and donning the tefillin and the tzitzit and giving offerings and saying the prescribed prayers in the proper order but he adds that although the prayers depend on speech everything is primarily dependent first upon action he says that a person must not say a prayer until he first observes the act of conforming to the prayer if his physical act of cleansing himself or donning the tefillin for example is flawed the prayer will also be flawed and so will the person become flawed below and above if he does make his prayers correctly then the upper and lower grades are blessed through him at the end of the prayers he should imagine himself as if he were dying since he gave his soul as a pledge Rabbi Shimon says that there are some sins that do not get atoned for until a person dies he tells us about the importance of doing the ceremony of prayer with the full attention of the heart and how one must not approach God with any false intention 66 Rabbi Shimon began the discussion with of David to you Hashem do I lift up my soul O my Elohim I trust in you Tehillim 251 to 2 and he asks why did David see fit to prepare this praise so since all praises that are in alphabetical order are complete while this one is missing the Bob and why is this arranged for the prostration upon the face 67 he answers it is because it is a supreme mystery concealed among the friends during the time night falls. The lower tree on which death depends which is malchute from the judgment aspect spreads its branches and covers everything therefore it becomes dark and all the inhabitants of the world a taste of death and man hastens to give the deposit of his soul and deposit it as a pledge in its hand for the night time so it would be returned at daybreak and since it took the soul as a deposit the deposit returns to its owner when morning comes when morning arrives and the pledge is returned to him he is required to bless the holy one blessed be he who is the highest trustee 68 after waking from his sleep he enters the synagogue decorates himself with his tefillin covers himself with tits it enters and cleanses himself first with the offerings after that he accepts upon himself the yoke of malchute in the order of david's praises which are the arranging of the yoke of the kingdom and in this order of praises he steeps himself in that yoke following that is the order of prayer while seated which is parallel to Malchute and the order of prayer while standing which is parallel to Zeir and to connect them Zeir and and Malchute together 69 come and behold the mystery of it although the prayer depends on speech and the utterance of the mouth everything is mostly and first dependent upon action and afterwards upon speech and uttering with the mouth and what is the deed it is only the action that a person performs first that resembles prayer and a person must not say a prayer until he first displays an act of that resembles prayer 70 the first activity is when a person gets up from his sleep he must cleanse himself first meaning relieve himself following that he must accept the yoke upon himself to cover his head with the passages of the commandments afterwards he shall tie the knot of unification these are the tefillin one on the head and one tefillin on the hand and fix them into a knot on the left hand and on the heart as we explained concerning his left Hand is under my head, Sher Hasherim 26, and set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, Sher Hasherim 86, a reference to the hand tefillin, which is the secret of Malchut that is put on the arm against the heart, and we already explained that this is the action that one must perform at first 71. Following this, when a person enters the synagogue, he should first purify himself with offerings by means of speech, that is by reciting the passages of the offerings, then one should accept the yoke of Malchut to spread over his head with the praises of King David with the same action as of one who spreads on his head the passages of the commandments, which corresponds to the action of wearing the tzitzit. Following this is a seated prayer, which corresponds to the tying on of the hand tefillin, denoting Malchut, then is the standing prayer, which is the secret of Zeir and which parallels the donning of the head tefillin, and one corresponds to the other, the deed must conform to. Speech since certainly prayer depends on both speech and the deed 72 if his deed is flawed speech does not find a place upon which to dwell and this is not considered a prayer and that person becomes flawed above and below since it is necessary to demonstrate a deed and say the pro
deed and speech properly and confess my sin certainly I entrust you with my soul, meaning that he accepts upon himself to sacrifice his life soul 74 and a person should imagine himself as if he departed from this world since he gave his soul to that place of death that is the reason there is no Bob in the alphabetical order of the prayer beginning with the verse to you O Hashem do I lift up my soul for Bob is the tree of life meaning Z-E-I-R and which is the secret of Bob of Y-U-D-A. Bob and the one that he entrusted with his soul is the tree of death meaning Malchut and that teaches us that the mystery of it is that there are sins that are not atoned for until a person departs from this world that is what is written surely this iniquity shall not be forgiven you till you die Yeshaya 2214 and therefore this person most certainly gives himself to death and sacrifices his soul to this place to Malchut not for a pleasure that at night but rather as one departs the world most certainly 75 and this correction must be with the meditation of the heart and then the holy one blessed be he has mercy on him and forgives his sins happy is the person who knows to entice and serve his master willingly and with his heart's devotion woe unto him who comes to tempt his creator with a distant heart unwillingly it says nevertheless they did flatter him with their mouths and they lied to him with their tongues for their heart was not steadfast with him Taylor. 7836 to 37 he says to you O Hashem do I lift up my soul yet all his talk is with a distant heart and this causes him to depart from the world before his time during a period when this tree is awakened in this world to exact punishment 76 and therefore a person must devote his soul and will to his master and not approach him with a false intention because he that tells lies shall not remain in my sight Taylor 1017 what is the meaning of remain and he replies it is when one readies himself for that for the devotion of his soul when he falls on his face and his heart is far from the holy one blessed be he a voice calls out he shall not remain in my sight this person wants to make amends for himself but he shall not remain I do not wish to have him corrected most certainly this is so if he comes to unify the holy name but does not bring about unison properly 77 praiseworthy is the portion of the righteous in this world and the world to come about them it is Written and they shall come and see my glory. Yeshaya 6618 And surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. Tehillim 14014 Rabbi Lazar approached and kissed his hands. He told him if I had come to this world only to listen to these words it would have been enough. Rabbi Yehuda said happy is our lot and happy is a lot of Israel who cling to the Holy One. Blessed be he as it says but you that did cleave to Barim 44 and your people also shall be all righteous. Yeshaya 6021 Blessed be Hashem forevermore. Amen and Amen. May Hashem reign forevermore. Amen and Amen.